Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. You earn 3% daily cash back up front when you use it to buy a new iPhone 15, AirPods, or any products at Apple. And you can automatically grow your daily cash at 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a high-yield savings account. Apply for Apple Card in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. This episode is brought to you by Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business. Want to advance your career or switch fields? An MBA from Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business can help. Earn your degree from a top-ranked business school with a thought-provoking curriculum, one-on-one leadership coaching, support from experienced career counselors, and full-time online hybrid and accelerated MBA formats. Join the intelligent future. Visit cmu.edu slash Tepper to learn more. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2546. Four gift-giving tips to give the perfect present this holiday by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Welcome back to our Sunday bonus episode, where I share an article with you from a different podcast in our network to keep your life nice and optimized. Today's episode is coming from Optimal Relationships Daily. You can find that show wherever you're listening to this. And please do follow or subscribe to the show to get new episodes every day. And with that, here's Greg with the post and commentary as we optimize your life. Four gift-giving tips to give the perfect present this holiday by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com Headlines like Oprah's Favorite Things or Tech Gifts for Gadget Geeks have been popping up in your Amazon sidebar for weeks. All of America's malls are playing Jingle Bell Rock on repeat, and your niece just sent you an email with the subject line, Wish List, All Items High Priority. That's right, it's the holiday season. And while some people get annoyed by the consumer mania, I love this time of year because I love buying holiday gifts for people. Watching their faces as they open up the perfect present, one I am totally confident they'll love, that's part of a rich life for me. But I wasn't always in love with gift giving. In my early 20s, I didn't know how to give good gifts at all. I would literally say, I suck at giving gifts, and then walk into a party with a bottle of some random vodka hand it over and wipe my hands clean. Notice how I created my own self-fulfilling prophecy by using that language. I also wondered why women seemed to be so much more thoughtful at picking gifts and remembering to send them, when in reality, I spent no time on it. I was looking for excuses to stay the way I was. But then I realized, giving gifts is a skill. And just like any skill, I could improve. In this post, I'll show you I did it, and the four lessons I've learned about how to give the perfect gift. How to give the perfect holiday gift. Just like any skill, giving good gifts requires practice and opening yourself to learning from others. When I realized that I could get better, I created a plan. I read a ton of tips and books about gift giving. I sent out hundreds of holiday gifts to my friends and family over the next few years and improved after seeing their reactions. I even built a process with my assistant to systematize it. I made it a priority, and it radically changed my personal and professional life. Most of all, I started finding joy in choosing a great gift and seeing their reaction. After years of gift-giving, here are some of the lessons I learned. Holiday gifts tip number one. If someone is really into something, don't buy it for them. I learned this lesson from Reddit, and it blew my mind because it is so counterintuitive. When you think of someone you want to buy a gift for, it's easy to zoom in on the thing that defines them. For example, you know I love hot sauce. I live it, I breathe it, I go to the NYC hot sauce convention. Therefore, it is natural to say, hey, let me go get this guy some hot sauce. Wrong. Do not buy a guy like me hot sauce. I'm already 500 steps ahead, and you telling me, hey, have you tried Tapatio? is like someone asking if I've ever had water. For example, my friend Nick Gray is a tea connoisseur. I'm not going to buy him tea leaves, a tea set, or a tea subscription. He already knows everything about tea. Go one level deeper, or one level laterally, to pick a better gift. Holiday gifts tip number two. Give people what they want, 
not what you think they want or need. The classic example is a mom asking her son what he wants, the son saying, I don't know, maybe just an Amazon gift certificate, and then the mom getting him a basket of olive oil and cheese. WTF. If someone wants a gift certificate, get them a gift certificate. You can make it more of a special gift by the presentation and note you send. Holiday gifts tip number three. Presentation matters. Again, most men suck at this, especially men in their 20s. They think walking into a holiday party and throwing someone a bottle of wine in a Rite Aid plastic bag is fine. It might be fine, but go the extra step, dude. Wrap it or get it wrapped. Write a quick note like this. John, thanks for having me. I always appreciate when you throw your yearly holiday party. Last time, I loved the chicken and I met a new friend. Looking forward to today. I'm not going to get into stationery because you aren't ready for that. The way you live life directly affects the way others see you and how you see yourself. That means the way you look, the clothes you wear, the conversations you have, the gifts you give. It all matters and you can control it. Holiday gifts tip number four. Give the gift in front of others. Part of a good gift is letting the person signal that other people think about them. Have you ever been in a club and watched when someone orders bottle service? They have fireworks going off, lights, people dancing as they bring the bottles over. There's value in theatrics. If you're not opening presents together during the holiday season, make a big show of the gift wherever you are. The person will love it. There is the rare person who hates the limelight. If you know this, Adapt this advice. When it comes to good gifts, it's not about the price. If you've been following us for a while, you may have a sub-savings account for the holidays or learned how to tap into hidden income or side gig to pay for those extra presents. But it's not the money that matters when it comes to getting someone the perfect holiday gift. You could just as easily handwrite a card that says something meaningful. Here's an example. Nicole and Jack, we always have a great time when we hang out. We'd love to take you to dinner slash movies slash show you a new piece of art at the park that we love in the new year. Are you free on January 5th or 6th? Think about what it would feel like to get a note like that. To feel appreciated and know others love your company. You don't have to wait until the holidays, but now is a great time to start practicing and showing your family, friends, and colleagues how much you appreciate them. Generosity is a huge part of my rich life so I've tried to dial in and get deeper. I wanted to share what I've learned so far about giving good gifts, but I'm still improving. You just listened to the post titled, Four Gift-Giving Tips to Give the Perfect Present This Holiday by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com Labor strikes, climate change, your beat-up office printer. What do they all have in common? Come on, it's all about the money. Economics is everywhere and everything, fueling our lives, even where we least expect it. If you're a fan of Optimal Finance Daily and are curious to learn something new and exciting about economics every week, I recommend you listen to the Planet Money podcast from NPR. Planet Money is a different kind of world where the complex economy actually makes sense, where human stories supersede abstract theories. For example, credit scores may sound complex, but Planet Money can give you simple tips so that you can make better financial decisions. And Planet Money also answers some of life's burning questions, like, will AI take over our jobs? And why are Christmas trees so darn expensive? The Planet Money team lives to tell a good story in around 30 minutes. It's econ for the rest of us. Tune in to Planet Money every week for entertaining stories and insights about how money shapes our world. Stories that can't be found anywhere else. Listen now to Planet Money from NPR, wherever you get your podcasts. Hold music. You want to avoid it, and so do your customers. So say goodbye to hold music and hello to faster, smarter support with Salesforce. Make service more personal and agents more productive using built-in trusted AI. Then watch costs and wait times drop and satisfaction soar. Support customers in a whole new way with Service GPT. Learn how at salesforce.com slash service GPT. Hopefully everyone is in the gift-giving mood now after some really awesome ideas from our author, Ramit. 
As you might tell from the name of his website, Rumit specializes in finance, and he is often narrated on one of our other shows, OFD, Optimal Finance Daily, so feel free to check him out there if you'd like to learn more about that. I want to end today by supplementing Ramit's teachings with an idea I heard of recently pertaining to gift giving, uh, which I really, really like. I can also be a bit of a Grinch uh, when it comes to the consumerism of Christmas. Gift giving is nice, of course, but I have definitely retreated more into the idea of spending time together or having experiences together when it comes to holidays or birthdays as I've gotten older. That being said, One of my uh, mother's co-workers, actually, she recently shared this rule uh, that she has in her house when it comes to gift giving. And the rule is that she and her husband, rather than showering their children with endless gifts, they take a more mindful and minimalist approach and give their children four gifts each, very precise gifts. How are these gifts chosen, you ask? Well, they ask their kids for the following, which has a nice jingle to it. Something you want, something you need, something to wear, something to read. I absolutely love this idea, and I hope you parents will at least give it a thought, as it does encourage children to be purposeful in what they ask for, still receiving gifts that they're excited about, but, you know, with thought behind them. Excellent, excellent philosophy to raise children that don't expect too much and appreciate what they have. I highly endorse it. So, thank you so much for being here today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this post and that it gracefully transitions you into the holiday season which has really snuck up this year with all the other stuff we've had on our minds. Here's to ending the year strongly and on a harmonious note. We've got more for you tomorrow here on ORD, so do not miss out. I'll see you there, everyone, where your optimal life awaits.